Hello, and welcome to the Tyke Holiday APIM Extravaganza. Obviously, I'm going to be here talking about uh, what we've been doing in 2022 and how the trends have been changing. And look at me, I just did a 2020 trend of leaving myself muted. But folks, hi, nice to meet you. My name is Nathaniel and I am a developer evangelist at Twilio and I like provocative titles. So the provocative title for this talk today is called The New new normal for APIs. And all I'm going to be doing is looking back at some of the trends over the past year, well, really the past two years, and looking forward at the trends that hopefully we're going to see in 2023. So saddle up, and let me just quickly tell you a little bit about myself. I am a developer evangelist working at Twilio. For those of you who may not know, Twilio is an API platform for developers to integrate communications into their applications. So uh, emails, text messages, video calls, voice calls, all of those things. And being someone who has to educate or talk to developers all the time about the APIs that they're using, I like to keep an eye on the industry and find out where it's going, what's coming next, what new technologies are coming. Now, I like to talk about it a lot and write code. So my friends call me at Chatterbox Coder. So you can find me there if you're looking. But more importantly, we are going to look back at some trends. So why don't we pause and turn back the clock? I'd like you to kind of in your mind go back. Unfortunately, I do not have a DeLorean waiting to take us back in time. But if you could just take your mind back to about the start of 2021. The buzzword that was going around was this new normal, which I honestly got tired of. It became a bit of a cliche, and it was used to refer to the kind of change in behavior that everyone was going to in business because of the pandemic. I mean, the mere fact that I'm talking to you through a video camera virtually is kind of a legacy from those days. And it has become a cliche, but I don't think it was without reason. There were some trends, actually, that started during 2020 and during this new normal into 2021 that have continued to come. And these trends are eerily similar and we continue to see them in 2022. Uh, we saw that APIs continued to grow, continue to grow, especially in some new industries like healthcare and finance, which maybe in the past had been a bit reluctant to come and join us on this digital transformation journey. Uh, but after 2020 and into 2021 and 2022, uh, we saw them continue to grow and continue to explode as new APIs in these fields were used. And also these industries also began to adopt APIs themselves. We also saw uh, digital transformation was not just coming, but it was also being powered by APIs. Uh, executives were agreeing. This is... Um, actually from a survey done by Postman, where 98% of executives agreed that APIs were an essential piece of digital transformation. So rather than building from scratch, using APIs, also building APIs internally to make sure they can grow with a digital transformation. And what we also saw, like I'm a developer evangelist, and I always like looking at different technologies, is how some technologies, especially new ones, began to become more widespread. GraphQL, for instance, is one that became very, very popular over 2021 and continued to grow into 2022. But even with all of that, we got to 2022, and rather than it being like the wonderful Christmas of APIs with all of this positive growth, we came into what I think is going to be one of the buzzwords of 2022, the macroeconomic environment. I've heard it way too many times this year. I can't wait to stop hearing it. Uh, but it was a big, it is a big part of our reality this year. And I think it is going to be part of what affects us going forward. Uh, I like to think that instead of Father Christmas giving us presents of APIs, we instead got Scrooge kind of like holding onto the money bag. And Lots happened. We had like 145,000 tech workers were laid off. Uh, it's global inflation. There's either a recession that's either started or it's going to start. Lots has been happening. And I think there's going to be a new buzzword. It's going to be efficiency. And I would like to talk a little bit about today. What I would like to talk about today is about how APIs are going to power the efficiency in 2023. Now I'm going to go really, really fast, blaze through this. I'm going to talk about five of my highlights for 2023 that I think are going to be how APIs help us move towards efficiency. 
So number one, we have API first development. So more and more companies are going to be shaping their strategy, hiring, and all even their infrastructure around APIs. They're going to be modeling the technology of APIs into the very structure of their business on multiple levels. And I think this is going to be very, very exciting. We're going to see lots of companies grow, and all of these companies are going to have an advantage because they're going to be able to be productive. They're going to be able to integrate with more partners much more quickly and grow efficiently. So API first development is going to be a big word that you're going to hear a lot of over the next year. And I'm very excited to be a part of it as well. Also, developer experience is here to stay. Now in the world of APIs, the customer is a developer and developer experience is the customer experience. And, and one thing I've been thinking about recently is this holy grail of self-service, being able to empower developers and empower people to build and actually get to completion, get to production on their products. And they don't necessarily need so many resources, specifically man hours from your team. And, and I think developer experience is going to be a really big part of how APIs become popular and how APIs stay relevant in the future moving forward. We're also going to have one of my favorite slides. AA is an AI, sorry, is nearly here. And I do say nearly because there have been so many promises over the past like five years of how AI is going to be in APIs now and every time we find out that it's not ready yet, it's not finished cooking. Um, one thing I actually have been noticing a lot is there has been chat GPT, uh, which has been going wild on Twitter, and I've been seeing so many amazing stories. Uh, and I'm really excited to see how APIs are going to be democratizing artificial intelligence and machine learning because companies aren't necessarily going to be able to make all of the investments to house these themselves. However, uh, and I think a great example of this is Stack Overflow recently just banned people from posting results from GitHub Copilot or, or ChatGPT as answers to questions. And the reason was the AI was coming up with really plausible looking solutions that weren't exactly right. And it became a, a little bit confusing for a lot of users. So I think we are nearly there, and I definitely think that there will be a lot more strides happening in the next year. I'm not gonna say it's gonna finally be here, but I definitely think that there's going to be many, many more APIs that are springing up and many, many more opportunities for us to use AI APIs in the next year. All right, moving on, we are also going to have API skills coming into increasing demand. Now, right now, we have lots of developers who work on consuming APIs. But as APIs become more important, and when I talked about API first, as they become more important in the culture and in the, in the fabric of businesses, more and more developers are going to need to learn how to build great APIs, how to architect great APIs. And I think there's going to be a massive influx in demand for these skills. And then you're going to see a lot of developers move there. And even developers who maybe aren't building those APIs, it's just going to be a much greater awareness of APIs and what a good API feels like across the industry. And I think this is going to be really interesting as we move forward, especially when we see education and other things begin to catch up with this demand. All right. Uh, next, we have a new age of API management. Now, this one's really relevant to Tyke as well, uh, but more companies are going to be using API management platforms instead of developing in-house management teams. Remember what I said about efficiency. Lots of companies are going to want to be able to quickly spin up APIs at scale, but they don't want to necessarily have to do some of the more intensive labor that would take time and, and money and investment over a longer period of time. And what they would love to do is be able to have the, the, the guarantees, the insurance almost, of security, of updates, of keeping up with the latest technologies that a lot of these API, API platforms have to offer. And they'll be taking advantage of that. So be watching for the new API, not new, but like the continuing growth of API management platforms as time goes on. Now, one more honorable mention that I'm going to put in here is about technologies. Because I'm a developer, people always ask my opinion, say, what technology do you think is going to take over? Now, I've used this little cartoon here. I'm going to zoom in on it. Uh, it's actually two things. You've got uh, Santa Claus will be the, says that they'll be the victor, and the other is on saying that not while Father Christmas still stands. 
And we see that both actually should really coexist. And I think that's what's going to happen. Lots of people have been talking about GraphQL, about async API with event-driven frameworks and, and gRPC. But REST will continue to remain the default technology for APIs. But what we are going to see is the continued growth and adoption of all of these new technologies, but in specialized use cases, because there are definitely uses where some of these API, uh, API technologies work really, really well. And I expect to see them continue to grow in those areas. All right. What am I keeping my eye on? I know I'm flying through these. Don't worry, we're going to have time for questions afterwards. But what am I keeping my eye on in 2023? Developer experience. The intuitive, familiar APIs, they're the ones that are going to grow the quickest. They're the ones that are going to continue to succeed. We're also going to have a low code integration. So I really think that people who are building APIs need to start thinking about how these APIs will be integrated into low code tools and platforms, because this is going to open APIs to a whole new community of users and frankly, a cheaper community of users, especially as we go towards efficiency. So I do expect many more integrations with low code or no code platforms as well. I do think that the API skills drought, which I think is coming, I think will bring with it more and more API awareness at every part of the business. So more people are going to have an understanding of API technologies and, and a more in-depth, not just like REST and HTTP requests, but have more specific knowledge on how they can use these APIs or how the APIs are just being used by other teams in their business. And last but not least, one of the things that I'm just going to keep on doing is playing with AI, keep playing with the, and maybe create a new avatar as well. And just watching to see how I can use these to integrate into my services to pass that on to th on things that I built. So in the APIs I'm building, I'm already actually looking at how I can use, for example, uh, AI to do some of the things that it does really well. For example, transcription it does that really, really well uh, to do some other things as well there. All right. Thank you so much. I know that this was a lightning talk. I went through so much content really, really fast just to talk about some of the things that I have seen coming and some of the things that I think are going to continue to happen in the future. I'm really excited by 2023 and I can't wait to see what happens with APIs in the next year. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Nathaniel. That was a fantastic session. A lot of these topics are actually very, very close to my heart as well. It's something that I have been uh, playing around with and just pondering upon. Some of them obviously closer to home with the API management bits as well on a more day-to-day -day basis. Uh, it's really interesting that from your talk, um, there is this theme of democratization of technology. And you've touched upon democratization of AI, democratization of, you know, APIs and access to technology in general. I'm quite curious, how do you see organizations potentially approaching this as we move into the new year? What is, you know, how are they likely to get affected and how can they actually uh, make the most out of this, the users as well as the organizations? Uh, 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 there's a business term that I've been hearing a lot about lately um, in some meetings, which is uh, customer acquisition cost, right? And we often think about that in terms of money, in terms of marketing. But if we think of it as users as well, uh, customer the acquisition cost means how quickly and how much effort does it take a, a new user to start using and consuming this API? And regardless of whether that is uh, something really, really complex or something really, really simple, the amount of time it takes for some Someone to get that first result. Uh, someone, I can't remember who it is, and I'm really annoyed that I can't remember their name to give the credit, but they talked about like the ladder theory and how much time it takes for the person to get the next step. You're not trying to get someone from zero to 100. And I think what's going to happen and what is continuing to happen is uh, people are coming with new inventive ways to make those steps much, much smaller. And this is where, for example, low, low code comes in or no code comes in. It's not necessarily about taking uh, the jobs away from developers. No, it's just making the steps that they need to take much, much smaller. And I think this is where lots of API companies shouldn't just limit themselves to thinking about, okay, it's developers are our only audience, but there are so many different developers. I'm not going to say developers are the only audience, but they're different types of developers. And these developers want to work in different ways as well. Absolutely. I'm completely with you on that. And I think that actually leads us into another point that you made, because with developers as an audience, I think a lot of times 
obviously we've, we've heard about developer experience quite a bit. I think it's picked up in its uh, in in the number of mentions that it gets on a more regular basis this year as well. But uh, at the same time, I think sometimes people do get it a little bit wrong because they try to kind of think about DX in almost a silo and almost uh, limit what DX is to, say, tools and documentation, and then that's kind of the end of it, um, as opposed to thinking about it from a more holistic point of view. So just uh, your, your quick thoughts on, you know, just extend, expanding on what you already mentioned around, you know, DX being the new customer experience, but also thinking about the value exchange that comes with it and really thinking about it more from a holistic perspective rather than uh, a siloed approach. Yeah, and, and when I say developer experience, it is the customer experience. I, I think a lot of times uh, people think of developer experience and kind of like you said, they just think of like docs and tools. And that I, yeah. I completely agree is a very, very big part of developer experience. But I think um, all of it really, really comes in being able to surface the right information at the right time, rather than just selling every single thing that your API does, being able to be intentional and be able to get feedback from them in order to improve the product and continually improve the developer experience rather than being very opinionated and telling these developers exactly how they should be using it. This is the only way you should be building with, with our services. So I think coming up with different ways and thinking of out of like really going universal and thinking about what is the life cycle of this developer from the day they hit my site the first time and they kind of learn about it through all the interactions they have building with it. And then also how do I let them know ahead of time uh, that things need to change, that things need to upgrade? What are the ways I can educate them so that they can continue to grow as developers using the platform? And uh, I think the companies that crack this, they are the ones who will have lifetime users in their audience. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Nathaniel. That is already, I've got, a, I've got a whole bunch of other questions. We can have an entire hour worth of session over here, but thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's a fantastic talk and really looking back at some of the trends that have come before and what to look forward to in 2023. Thank you so much for being part of it. It's been an honor. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay.